lecture three. Uh, we uh, we finish the lecture three, which is uh, introduction to the system. Okay, so today we continue with the lecture four, also the part two of the chapter two. Okay, part two of the chapter two, which is the LTS system and the convolution integral. Okay, so for today uh, or in this lecture, you will learn about what is LTI system and uh, what is the response of the LTI system. <clears throat> Normally, we name it as a convolution integral. So, convolution integral also quite a famous, okay, famous in exam, okay, either in the test or in the uh, final exam. Okay, so when talk about the LTI system, okay, LTI system is referred to the linear time invariant. Okay, linear time invariant. LTI, right? LT, L is for linear. T is uh, time. I is invariant. So you all, you learn in the previous uh, lecture, lecture three, you know what is linear. Okay, and also time invariant. Invariance means that um, there's no change with time. Okay, so it's a LTI system. So, for example, okay, if you say that uh, the system is both linear, okay, for LTI system, must fulfill the system must both linear and time invariant, so they only can call linear time invariant system, LTI. So, in, uh, in order to uh, represent by a block diagram, you have the input signal, okay, as a xt as the input signal and then the system hash and then you produce the output yt okay this is the for the continuous time and for the xn is the discrete time so just let to know if the discrete time also the same but uh, it is in discrete okay so the behavior of the lti system is determined by the impulse response the hash t or the hash n so in this case, we in this chapter, in this topic, or in this uh, signal system, we only talk about the hash t, lah, which is the continuous time. Okay, the output of the system if uh, if the input is unit impulse. So uh, in the LTI system, the impulse response, the hash, is determined by the input, and this input we know that is a xt, right? But this xt we set it as the delta t impulse. Okay, this is the impulse. Okay, the input is the impulse. So we name this the hash t is the impulse response. Okay, we name this hash is the impulse response. So let's review back uh, what is the LTI system. Okay, you can consider that the system is uh, we have the input xt to produce the output yt. And the system is time invariant. It's the time shift of the input without the same time shift of the output means that there's no change in time. Okay, there's no change in time. Okay, if the input we delay, uh, we a delay or advance with t naught, the output also uh, has a delay or the de uh, advance with t naught. Okay, so the system is linear if superposition principle applies. So a one multiplied with f x one t plus a two x two t which will equal to a1 y1t plus a2 y2t. So this is a uh, continuous from the lecture 3. Lah. You study what is linear and you study what is the time invariant. So we combine both, which is linear time invariant. <clears throat> so in the LTI system, uh, many physical models can be models accurately, okay, such as the basic electrical circuit, models of the resistance, inductance, and capacitance are the LTI system. So the equation describing the LTI system can be solved mathematically. So no general procedure exists for the mathematical solution of non-LTI system. Okay, so the response of the system on the complex signal content basic signal can be obtained by looking at the response of the system on the individual basic signal. So this one, for example, in the Fourier series, so we will <clears throat> in chapter Fourier theory, chapter 3, we will go through again this LTI system. So <clears throat> in 2.4, there is an LTI system, the connection, the interconnection. In, uh, there are a few types of connection. Okay, The first one is a series, okay, or we call it cascaded. And another one is the parallel. Okay, There's another one called feedback. Okay, 
which are three types. So in addition, there can be a feedback system. So this is the third one. Uh. Okay, first one is series, second parallel, third one is a feedback. Where the output of system is feedback into the input of the system. So if you look at this one, okay, it connect in series, okay, uh, connect in series. This means it's a series connection or cascaded connection. If we connect in parallel, H1, H2, H3, okay, connect in parallel, we call it as a parallel connection. Okay, if two or more LTS systems are in series with each other, their order can be interchanged without affecting the overall output of the system. This means that, okay, we have uh, H1 and H2. It doesn't matter you want to connect uh, H1 first or H2 first. Okay, if you connect H1, uh, then H2, then H2, after that H1 also can, no problem. So there is uh, no problem with the connection. Okay, so they are older. They are older means that either you, you H1 first or H2 first, there is no effect to the output. That is so-called the Siri connection. So uh, for a system in parallel connection, okay, so two or more LTI system are in parallel with one another and equivalent system is one of the one of that defined as some of this individual system. This means that this one, okay, the input, you can go to the H1 or input, you can go to H2. Okay, then combine it. You combine it means you sum it. Or I can combine this system, the input response into H1 plus H2. Also can. Okay, you can uh, simplify it, H1 plus H2 instead of this parallel. Okay, then the third connection is the feedback system. A feedback system of the response of the system is feedback, okay, means that you have the return. If you have the control, mostly in the control, they have the feedback, okay? And combined with the excitation in such a way that to optimize the response in some desired sense, okay? So you have input, you go to the system h1 and then the output of the h1 will fit back to the h2 to uh, give an input to the h1 so for example uh, our temperature control okay uh, aircon okay some of them you can uh, set okay let's say uh, you set to degree uh, 22 degree okay if the temperature uh, it continue 22 is if it is drop 22, uh, maybe 21, so it will uh, stop a while, sleep a while. After that, when it sends the temperature goes up to 20, 20, more than 22, so they will start the thermostat again. Okay, you start the icon again. So this is the control. You can have feedback. Or the water level control in the tank of flush toilet. So if the water level reach the maximum, okay, reach the maximum level so it won't uh, continue uh, the water will continue uh, into the flow into the water tank so uh, it won't have the leakage so, and also the pouring of a glass of the lemonade to the top of the glass without overflowing and next is a, a refrigerator ice maker which keep the bin full of the ice but does not make extra ice so that has a feedback system Okay, it's know, it know that uh, the refrigerator know that, okay, uh, the ice is already full. You no need to make extra ice. Okay, no need to keep making the extra ice and driving a car. So uh, this one, uh, example of the feedback system, the thermostat that automatically change the indoor temperature setting. Okay, it's set to 71 uh, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay, or this one is water level control in the tank of the flush toilet. Okay, so you you have the flood uh flood bowl here, which control the the water level. So this is the summary of the three connection: series connection, parallel connection, and feedback connection. Okay, yes, three. Next is the conclusion. Okay, we are talking about the convolution integral. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so we uh we go to conclusion. If you in the um, page seventy five, which is conversion integral. So what is conversion? Uh, especially for the impulse response. A unit impulse, the delta T, delta T is defined as, uh, you know that the delta T, okay, when T equals zero is one, otherwise is zero. So impulse response HT is the response of the LTI system when excited by a unit impulse. This means that if our input is delta T, okay, then our hash is called the impulse response because our input is the uh, impulse. Okay, our input is impulse. So the hash we so call the impulse response. <laughs> okay. So if xt is the unit impulse, means that the xt is equal to delta t. The result of this process is simply hash t, which uh, so called the impulse response. This is what I explained just now. And the formula is uh, yt is the output. Okay. Output equal to delta t. This is the input. Okay. Impulse. Uh, impulse. Multiply with the impulse response. Okay. Or oh. This one not multiply, sorry. This uh symbol so called the convolution. Okay. So delta T convolute with the hash T. Uh if we represent this is convolution. If we represent in the formula, uh we can use the integration from minus infinity to infinity, delta tau. Okay, we need to change the the form T to tau. So delta tau hash t minus tau d tau equal to hash t. So this formula, we will have to use it later on. We need to remember. Okay. So the relationship between the input xt, output yt, and the impulse response hd is given by the conversion integral written in this form. So again, here we are talking about the formula. Okay. Output equal to input convolute with the impulse response. So this is the formula, uh, which is the same as uh, just now. And this one is shown in series connection. Okay, in series connection means that uh, just now is uh, xt convolute with ht. So it, it also you can get the same output if ht convolute with xt. It is the same. But in terms of formula, in terms of formula, uh, Okay, if you look at the xt convolute with ht, the formula is the x tau ht minus tau d tau. So for the first one is tau, for the second one is t minus tau. Okay, let's say if you want to ht convolute with the xt, so the first one you change to tau, second one change to t minus tau. Is it okay, class? Are you able to follow me? Are you able to follow me? <laughs> Yes or no? Class? Okay, so uh, I continue with the procedure to perform conversion. So this is the procedure. The conversion between the input signal xd and the impulse response hd is defined as this one. Okay, this is the formula just now. So the computation yt using above conversion equation for any value of t involves the following operation. So this is a procedure one, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Okay, you have to follow this five step. Step one is to change of time index. What do you mean time index? Okay, the time index t in the signal xt and hd is changed to tau to get x tau and d tau. Hash, uh, x tau and, uh, and h tau. So this means that you have the input, okay, xt and hd is given by the question. Okay, this xt and hd is given by the question, but you need to change the time index. This means that xt, the t here you change to tau. hd, this t also change to tau. Okay, this is the first step. And then second one, folding. The signal hash tau is fold to get hash minus tau. Okay, this, just now you get x tau and hash tau. Okay, but it said second step is to folding. So you, uh, it asks you to choose the hash tau to select the hash tau, uh, be, uh, as a folded signal. This means that it's hash minus tau. Okay, it, it, this is compulsory because this is uh, the procedure. 
And then the third step is ask you to, the signal hash minus tau is shifted by t unit of time to get hash t minus tau. And this is another, uh, after folding is shifting. Okay, this one you have to follow also. Lah. But since you choose the hash tau, this one folding also hash tau, shifting also hash tau. You cannot say, oh, uh, I choose um, folding is hash minus tau, shifting I choose x minus tau. No, cannot. Okay, if you choose hash tau, folding and shifting also, you have to choose the hash. Okay, next is the multiplication, the signal x tau and hash t minus tau are multiplied to get the product signal. Means that just now you have the x tau here. Okay, x tau is a static. Static means no move. It doesn't move at all. But hash t minus tau is moving. It's moving, okay? From negative infinity to positive infinity. Later, I will give you an uh, animation how it's moved. So when it's moved, you need to multiply the signal of x tau and hash t minus tau. After multiply, you integrate, okay? Integrate using this formula, okay? Integrate using this formula. Are you clear? Maybe you still don't know how it works. It's okay. This is just a procedure. We look at it one by one, uh, okay? So this is, uh, let's say you have the example of this one. Find the convolution of unit step function. Ut plus 0 0.5 minus Ut minus 0 0.5. Okay, ut plus uh, 0.5 is uh, from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. Okay, this is the unit step function. Uh, ut plus 0.5 minus u, t minus 0.5 is this, is this uh, graph. And then exponent power of minus at. You know, the exponent power of a uh, Positive at is exponential growth, okay? But exponent power of minus at is exponential decay, means it goes almost goes to zero. And then it multiply with ut. This means that it's starting from zero to infinity, okay? Ut means that it's starting from zero into infinity. Uh, less than zero, there's no value. That's, that's why if you look at this uh, function, okay, it's starting from zero to infinity. Not to infinity, but it almost goes to zero. Lah, but the value is 0, point, uh, 0 something like this. So, uh, hash t just now, okay? Hash t is a moving part, okay? X tau is the static. Static means that I fix this uh, x, okay? X t, I fix it, and I move the hash, okay? So the, the red color is referred to the hash, hash t, okay? Hash t is this one, ah. this is the hash t. So I, after that, I changed to hash tau already, okay? I changed to hash tau because of the second step. Uh, no, the first step, I need to change the time index. So uh, it need to start from negative infinity, move and pass through the x tau and move, continue to positive infinity. Okay, so I want every one of you, uh, okay, this example, the, we look at, uh, mm, this is in your module, patch at D. Patch at D. Okay, this question. Find the convolution of the unit step function ut plus 0 0.5 minus ut minus 0 0.5 with a function x2 equal to exponent power of minus a tau a t u t. So this is the the x1, okay? Uh, we name it as the x1 and x2, x1, and then this one is the x2. Okay, so first of all, we want to change the time index.
Okay, first of all, we want to change the time index. Okay, not this one. Okay, we want to change the time index. So initially is uh, xt, x1t, and x2t. Now we change to x1 tau to x2 tau. So this one is x. Uh, initially is x1t. We change to uh, tau. So x1 tau. And then x2t you change to x2 tau. Okay. So all the axes uh, all the t you will change to tau. And then step two is about the uh, folding. Okay, the signal x1 tau is folded to get uh, x1 minus tau. Okay, x1 minus tau. Okay, so this one you change to x1 minus tau. Okay, so x1 tau is the inverse instead of x2 tau because x1 tau is a simple signal than x2 tau. Uh, we, we choose the x1 tau to inverse. Okay, just now you have the x and hash, right? But both of these is the x1 and x2 also can. So you, uh, here I choose the x1 tau as inverse because we want to, uh, doesn't matter which one to fix, uh, which one to uh, which one is fixed, which one is moving. So as long as uh, which one is easier to move, so we choose that one to move. Okay, if you, if you consider this one and two, which one to move is easier? Of course, uh, this signal uh, to move is easier as compared to the X2 tau. Okay, so X2 tau, we make it as fixed. So therefore, I said that x1 tau is inverse instead of x2 tau because x1 tau is simpler uh, signal than the x2 tau. So we change this one, x1 tau to x minus tau. So this one is a mirror image, huh? mirror image at the y-axis, okay, and you still get the same signal like this. Any question? You want to ask any question? Uh, okay. okay, then I continue with step three. Step three is shifting. The signal x2 minus tau is shifted uh, by t unit of time to get s2 t minus tau. Eh? I think there's some text missing. Mm -hmm. uh, shifting. The signal x2 minus tau is shifted by t unit of time to get x2 t minus tau and shifting before overlapping with x1 t. This means that, okay, you want to shift, right? So x, the signal x2 uh, minus tau, okay, x2 minus tau, x2 minus tau, uh, me, uh, x1, sorry, this one it should be x1. There's a typo there. Okay, x1 minus tau. Uh, is it clear or not clear? This x2 you change to x1 minus tau. Okay, the signal x1 minus tau is shifted by t units of time to get a eh, correct ah uh, no 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 it's correct 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 sorry sorry this one is correct no okay this one is correct then should be Shifting be more overlapping with x1 to e. Is it correct? The signal x minus tau is shifted by t unit of time to get x2 t minus tau and shifting before overlapping with 
x1. So x1, a, I think this one should be x1, this one x1, this one also x1. And then this one before overlapping with x2 because x2 is is fixed so x1 is not fixed x1 is shift uh, moving so that's why the signal x1 negative tau is this one is shifted by t unit of time to get x1 t minus tau okay and shifting before overlapping with x2 x2 is the one that this one x2 tau this one is tau <clears throat> okay please uh class please change it okay please make a correction so uh, this one is correct x1 minus tau is shifted by t which gives x1 minus t plus tau Okay, so we are rearrange it into x1 t minus tau. So we, we shift, okay, we shift to um, t unit, okay. Initially, this is the tau, right? We are talking about the x axis is tau. We shift t units to get t minus tau. This means that t minus t plus tau. So when minus t plus tau means we, we shift to the left. Uh. Okay, minus t plus tau means we shift to the left. We shift to the left, okay, but we arrange it so that it becomes uh, t minus tau. So we get this one. So when t, uh, t minus half, okay, and t plus half. When t minus half, this, uh, we look at this one, right, t minus tau, uh, but the value is a t minus half. This means that the tau is positive half. And t, okay, t plus half, this means the, the tau here is negative half. Okay, so we have a two value of tau. And then next is the multiplication. The signal x1 t minus tau and x2 tau are multiplied to get the product. Okay, we need to multiply and you should notice the x2 tau is the statics and x1 t minus tau is the moving. So this one is the moving and this one is the fixed. So we look at the next page. How it moving. Okay, so just now you said that this one is moving, right? And we have the fixed one is x2 tau. Okay, how it's moved means that it's moved from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this means that you will move uh, less than zero and then it will pass through zero and after that is zero uh, more than zero so you will pass through from negative infinity to positive infinity okay if you look at the explanation here is that as t change from negative infinity to positive infinity the signal x1 t minus tau is uh, the one uh, the rectangular shape or the square shape of the signal move from negative tau negative infinity to tau equal to positive infinity. Because of this, we need to consider different case depending on the different multiplication condition. So, uh, it move from negative infinity to positive infinity, so we consider three case. Okay, case one is uh, t less than half. t less than half, what will happen? Is there any overlapping? And when t uh, equal uh, in between negative half to positive half and case number three is if t more than uh, half what will happen is there any overlapping okay just like i told you just now the graph is moved from negative infinity to positive infinity and we want to find what is the overlapping if this part you see that there's no overlapping right but the overlapping happen after t okay from uh, zero 
to positivity. So we need to find the overlapping area. Okay, the uh, the intention or the objective is to find the the overlapping area. Okay, clear or not, class? Are you clear? Yes, doctor. Clear, doctor. Okay. So for case one, we need to find for t less than half. Because uh, maybe you ask, uh, why is t less than half? Huh? Okay, if we state it here, because the original signal of the x1 t minus tau is starting from t minus half to positive t, uh, uh, t minus half to t plus half. Okay, so we need to check what if the t is less than negative half. Okay, we want to check what happened if t is less than negative half. So let's label two sides x1 t minus tau as a and b. Okay. Uh, this one is a. Okay, different symbol. And uh, in the first case, x1 t minus tau move from negative infinity. So this one uh, is the x1 t minus tau move from uh, tau equal to minus infinity, okay, from this minus infinity until up to zero only, okay, from negative infinity up to zero, which is uh, which then uh, t equal to negative half, okay, we just stop at negative half lah for the less than half, so from negative infinity to t equal to negative half. Uh, it's easy to understand in this case only valid when side b just reach uh, y axis t equal to zero. So we will stop at t equal to uh, less than 0 0.5. Okay, and this one for side B, t plus uh, 0 0.5 as t just reached 0. So t plus a half equal to 0, which gives t equal to negative half. So the value, if we say that t plus a uh, because this value is start, uh, starting to move, right? Starting from negative to positive, uh, negative infinity to, to zero. So this is the first value, t, <coughs> t plus half. And we assume it's zero, then we get the value t is what? t is negative 0 0.5. Okay, so this is the, uh, the one that is no overlapping. We want to find uh, from non-overlapping to overlapping. So for this case, it's no overlapping at all. Uh, because uh, the static 1a is the graph starting from here, right? From 0 to positive infinity. But if less than t plus, uh, t plus half here, there's no overlapping because this graph is from here to here. But we stop okay, right before 0. So there's no overlapping occurs. Okay or not, class? You understand? Okay, doctor. Okay, okay doctor. Okay, doctor. Okay, and then we multiply. Okay? Multiply both sides. Just now also the same. The one explanation. Okay, this is the... We, we draw it uh, step by step so that you can see. Lah. This one is the X1. Okay, the moving one. Again, multiply with the fix. Okay, if the, you you don't understand, maybe you can write a wording. This is the moving part, and this is the fix. This is the fixed part or static. I would say static. Static part. So moving one, it moves from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, for but for this case is. From negative infinity, you up to zero here. You up to zero here. So what will happen? Or you up to uh, negative half on it. What will happen? Is there any overlapping? No overlapping, right? Because the signal here, when you multiply, this signal multiply with this signal, you will get zero because there's no overlapping. You, you, you mean what is overlapping and non-overlapping or not? For example, this signal 
multiply with the signal here. Do you get anything? No. No, right? So that's why you will get nothing. You see, I didn't plot anything. So you get zero. So this means that the, the signal is like this uh, for the first part. And the second part, the signal is like this. Okay. So this uh, x1 t minus tau multiply with x2 tau, you get nothing because the value multiplied with 0, you will get 0. Or 0 multiplied with the value, you will get 0 also. Okay, so this is the first case. Second case is uh, from negative half to positive half. Okay, okay, from negative half to positive half. Okay, the signal. First one is like this one. Okay, and the second one, the signal is this one. Okay, so there's an overlapping occurs. The overlapping is this side. Okay, so the this side is the first multiplication. X2, X2 tau, X2 tau is the one with the uh we are looking, we are looking for this part now. Okay, we are looking for this part. Okay, x2 tau, you get nothing, right? x2 tau is the exponential part, you get nothing. Multiply with x1, so x1 t minus tau is this, x1 t minus tau is this one. So you will have the value of 1. For x2, x2 is here. Okay, so 0 multiply with 1, you will get 0. Okay, this one okay or not, class? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Then I'm talking about the second one for the right hand side. Okay. I'm talking about this one now. So this side is the second multiplication. X2 tau is referred to this value. Maybe I just redraw again. It's hard to remove. Okay, I'm trying to remove the drawing. Okay, for the second part, we are. I'm talking about this part. Okay, so x two tau is referred to the this. Okay, I'm use the cursor now. Okay, from here to here, okay, is the x2. Okay, so you will get the uh, signal is exponent power of negative a tau. Okay, class, there's another is correction, negative a tau. Negative a tau, because why? Because you follow the question. I think there's a typo there. Negative a tau is from the equation. Okay. Uh, here, negative a exponent power of negative a tau. This one also need to change. Exponent power of negative a tau. Okay, please change. Uh, this one is patch at the one. Okay, this one is patch at the one. We change it. And then uh, this one. Okay, for the patch at the three, also you change exponent power of negative a tau. Okay, so x two t is this one. Okay, it's the exponent part. You multiply with the x one t minus tau. T minus tau is this part. Okay. Okay, I use the cursor, this one. Okay, from here to here. Okay. So this part, the, there is an overlapping. Here is the overlapping. Okay. Is that okay or not, class? Class. 
Mas, is it okay? Okay. Okay. Then, uh, this one is clearer lah. This one is the multiplication of both signal, uh, like the one I explained to you. Okay. This one is the x1 t minus tau. You multiply with this one. For sure, if you look at here, this one, the signal here, multiply with the signal here. What will you get? You only get the overlapping part only. Here to here, okay. Only this part only is um, uh, overlapping. Therefore, you will get this signal. Okay, and I think this one got typo also. You change to exponent minus a tau. Okay, change to exponent power of minus a tau. Okay, then uh, we move to case number 3, which is t more than half. What will happen? t more than half means that it's after uh, t plus half. Lah. So t more than half. Okay, so t more than half, uh, this one uh, again you change to exponent power derivative a tau. Okay, so where is the overlapping part? Okay, so we look at the overlapping part. Okay, this one can see clearly. Okay, the signal from here. Okay, you move which is more than half. And then you multiply with the signal like this. So, of course, where is the overlapping? This one. This one is the overlapping part. Which is a T should be more than a half. So, this one you also change to exponent power negative a tau okay so for the overlapping part are you okay before i go to the step 5 integration is this okay, one okay, okay huh? then we go to uh, step 5 which is integration the product signal is integrated okay just now i told you you need to use the formula right so just now for case 1, t less than half, okay, you didn't get anything. You didn't get anything because no overlapping occurs. So we use the formula x3t equal to uh, from minus infinity to t, okay. Uh, x2 tau, x1t minus tau d tau. This one is the formula. And you see that there is no overlapping when x1 tau, multiply with x uh, x2 tau multiply with x1 t minus tau okay you didn't get anything because the signal is not overlap so you will get zero okay you get zero so uh, the answer also zero this one is changed to the sign is like this okay so for non-overlapping of course you will get zero for overlapping part, which is from negative half to half, okay, this one is the overlapping part, so don't forget to change this one. We don't need this one actually. Okay, and here also have some typo. Uh, this one you change to exponent negative a tau. And then this one is a, you change the b to a, eh? Change the B to A. So all the B will change to A. So I assume that all the B, all the B change to A. Okay, so I, I won't uh, change here, So, but uh, everyone must know that all the B change to A only. So uh, we want to find out, okay, what is the uh, convolution? Okay, what is the convolution when the uh, X1, okay, when the X1 T minus tau convolute with the X2 tau? So we use the formula from 0 to t plus half okay we use this one okay the range as a range 0 to t plus half exponent power of 
a uh, negative a tau d tau okay so we integrate this one we get uh, oh okay i think this one is no we just remove this one i think you just remove this whole part you do not need this one okay so you integrate uh, exponent negative a tau you obtain neg exponent negative a tau divided by negative a then you get uh, the range from 0 to t plus 2 because it's a duplicate okay so that this one should be removed and then uh, you substitute the value t at uh, the tau to t plus half and then uh, another one is 0 so this one the tau you substitute with t plus half and another one minus with uh, tau with 0 so exponent power of negative 0 you will get exponent 0 you will get 1 okay exponent 0 you will get 1 so at the end you will get uh, 1 over a minus a negative uh, uh, exponent power of negative a t plus half divided by a so for the range of this one okay and then for case that more than half what will happen so x1 t minus uh, tau yeah is there any question hold on the mic okay so for case number three t more than half so uh, what will happen so just now from the step number four we know that we obtain this graph this graph uh, please change this one also is a uh, exponent power of negative a tau okay the range is correct so uh, you integrate from t minus half to t plus half okay this one also exponent negative a tau So this one, all the a changed, all the b changed to a. So exponent power of negative a tau divided by negative a. The range is from negative uh, t minus half to t plus half. And then you substitute the the tau with the range here. Okay, you sub you substitute the tau with t plus half and t minus half. Okay, and then you multiply in, you get negative a t minus a over 2 divided by negative a minus exponent negative a t plus a divided by 2 divided by negative a. Okay, then you take out the a here, so it's 1 over a. Okay, change all the b to a. Huh? And then you have the exponent negative a t plus a over 2, this one minus with exponent power of a t minus a divided by 2 so uh, this one we just want to simplify only lah. this is the way we simplify we want to take out the uh, exponent a negative a t because we have the same value so exponent negative a t divided by a multiply with the exponent a over 2 minus exponent uh, power of minus a over 2 so this is the answer so the final answer so please change all the b to a eh? so this is the final answer lah. so we must we must rewrite again the final answer for t less than half you will get 0 for t that in between minus half to half you will get the value here and for t more than half, you will get this value. Okay, is there any question? Is it very hard to understand? Hmm? Class, is it very hard to understand? Yes, but... But uh, so the the correction part I will 
as uh, I will put it. Oh no, not the correction part. Uh, for the recording part, I will uh, record and put it in the author platform uh, so that you can uh, view it again. Bye. So this is about the conversion integral. So we look at another example again, which is on page seventy-eight. There's another example. Okay, this is another example. Uh, example 2.15. Perform the conversion of the following causal signal. X1 T is 2 UT. X2 T is UT only. So you have this two unit step function. Any question you want to ask, class? Okay, if no, then I continue. X1 T equal to 2 UT, X2 T is UT. So you change. Okay, first step is change the time index. X1 T you change to X1 tau. X2 T you change to X2 tau. Okay, then this is the outcome. Okay, don't forget the x axis also change to tau. Okay, so means all the t you have to change to uh, all the t you have to change to tau. That's it. And then second step is the folding. Okay, uh, you choose the signal x2. Okay, you choose the signal x2 tau to fold it, to get the folded signal. Okay, you change this signal so you get x2 minus tau. And then u minus tau also, okay, because of the folded signal, you must uh, fold all the things. So if the u tau you obtain from 0 to infinity, and then minus tau is the folded signal, or we can say that it's the mirror signal from 0 to negative infinity. Therefore, you get the signal from 0 to negative infinity. And then the third step is for the shifting. Okay, the shifting, the signal x2 negative tau is shifted by t unit of time to, to get x2 t minus tau and shifting before overlap with x1 tau. This means that it's the same. Okay, uh, we, we fix the x, we fix which one? We fix, uh, here we fix the x1. Okay, we fix the x1. And we shift the x2. So here that here we say that we shift the x2 negative tau to t units. So means t unit means that we uh, shift to the left three units so that it won't overlap with the x1. Okay. So here t minus tau as tau equal to zero. This equation become t only. Okay, then step number four is multiplication. The signal x1 tau and x2 t minus tau are multiplied to get a product signal. You should notice that x1 tau is static and x2 t minus tau is moving. Okay, now uh, the value here is 2, okay? So x1, you know that the x1 is static. So this one is fixed, huh? but always is fixed. Okay. And then x2 is from negative infinity, then move to uh, positive. So it keep moving from negative infinity to positive infinity. So when it moves from negative infinity to positive infinity, uh, it will have few cases. Huh? Okay. For case 1, for t less than 0. Okay, change it this one. T less than zero. For t less than zero, you have x1 tau equal to 2 u tau. Okay, this one is the 2 u tau. You convolute with the x2 t minus tau. Okay, you convolute with this one. Okay, there's no overlapping. Make sure the first case is no overlapping. Okay, you the t here is any value of t, but it's at the positive, uh, at the left hand side. So when you convolute, this is not overlapping because this signal 
multiply with this signal so there's no overlapping you multiply whatever value you will get zero so this is the zero that you get for cas2 that from zero to positive infinity because just now is from negative infinity to zero now is zero to infinity okay so x1 tau is a uh, fix you get 2u tau convolute with x2 so now the x2 you shift okay you see that zero to infinity okay this t this means that the the cast here means from zero to infinity this means the t here is any value from zero okay from zero to infinity so any value so i simply put here t we don't know but it's in between zero to infinity so infinity without infinity this is our and uh, this is our uh, signal okay so is there any overlapping class yes yes right there's the overlapping so there is the overlapping the overlapping is yeah okay so therefore you get the overlapping result like this okay next step number five integration the product signal uh, is Bukan overlappingnya satu ke? Satu? Dekat mana? Yang soalan atas Ni, yang ni yang ada yang ni Ini dua uh -huh. darab dengan satu dapat apa? Oh Dua ni value dua, dua kan? Darab dengan satu hmm. Dapat dua lah kan? Oh, dia dua darab dengan satu Ini sebab unit step Nilai dia dua Darab dengan satu, dua kali satu dapat dua lah. Okay. Okay. Sebab okay. you must multiply kan. Hmm. So step five is integration. This means that uh, for case one, which is t less than zero. For t less than zero, there's nothing. Therefore, you get zero also. For case two that more than zero, you have the value from zero to t. Okay, so we can uh, using the formula with the range from zero to t, x one tau multiply with x two t minus tau. This is the formula. So what do you get from 0 to t, the signal you, you get is 2. My drawing is bad, okay? Okay, and then it's here. So from 0 to t, you get the amplitude is 2. So 2 d tau. You integrate, you get 2 tau. Okay, you substitute the tau with t and 0, you get 2 t. So this is for t more than zero. Okay, any question? <clears throat> Anything you want to ask us? Anything you want to ask about this uh, question, convolution integral? If you have question, you can ask. Is it would be good if you can uh, directly talk to me because I'm sharing the screen, so I won't look at the chat. If you have question, you can direct talk to me.
Any question? Any question, class? No. Okay, so I hope that you understand. Uh, so you go back home, also need to study, do some revision, okay, for each, for each example. Okay, then we... There's an exercise. This exercise you can refer to page 99. You go to page 99 to do the exercise 2.4. It's the same thing. This is the same question. Uh, not the same. Okay, never mind. Uh, it's the same end, it's not the same question, but okay. Uh, you can you also can do this exercise. The answer is this one. Okay, and then the convolution properties. Convolution properties uh is a uh, consists of property one commutative. There are a few properties. The first one is the commutative. Commutative this means that uh the Convolution process can be performed in any order and still produce the same result. ST, okay, convolute with HD or HD convolute with the XT. Okay, you get the same thing. Class, do you think that you can, uh, I can explain to you for the commutative, you can accept or not? They okay, right? Not much, not just few patch left before, uh, I think we, we can finish the lecture for. Okay, so commutative, this means that xt convolute with ht, same as ht convolute with the xt. Okay, so this means that if the convolution is commutative, it doesn't matter which signal is get flipped. Now, okay, just I told you just now. The role of the input xt and the input response ht can be interchanged. So it's same as the uh, Siri connection. Uh, this, this one is same as Siri connection. Okay, example of commutative. You can go to example 2.17. Example 2.17. Okay, this one, 2.17. Okay, xt is ut, ht is exponent power of negative a t ut with the condition a is more than 0. Okay, calculate the yt equal to xt convoluted with the ht. Okay, we look at here, okay, first of all, we, we know that we want to use this formula, okay, this is the formula, xt convoluted with ht, so we change to formula x tau ht minus tau d tau. So again, step one, you change the time index. You change the xt to, this is the xt. You change the xt to x tau. ut to u tau. And then ht to h tau. The one with the s1 minus a t u t, you change to negative a tau u tau. Okay, so this is the uh, same as previous. And then folding. The signal h tau is fought to get h minus tau. So you can uh, choose either one which is you think that is easier. So you select the hash tau to for to get a folded signal, so hash minus tau. Okay, so positive tau is like this, so negative tau is like this. Okay, this is negative tau. Then shifting. The signal hash minus tau is shifted by t unit of time to get hash t minus tau. This means that this signal will move slightly to the left hand side so that it's not overlapping okay, with the xt, with the uh, no, overlapping with x tau. So this one you slightly move, so that's why you said hash t minus tau. Okay, hash t minus tau. So step four is the multiplication. Okay, multiplication 
hash t minus tau and x tau. Multiply to get a product signal. Okay, so which one is static? X tau is static. Okay, let's see which one is static. Eh? X tau is static. You know that this one is hash t minus tau. Okay, this one is hash hash t minus tau. Okay, so we name this uh, first left. We label this side with as a b. Eh? Okay, so this hash t minus tau move from negative infinity to zero. Okay, so is that overlapping? This one is the x tau. x tau is fixed. Okay, it's fixed. So if we multiply, if we look at the multiplication of both signal, so the first signal is like this, hash t minus tau. You multiply with this one, this signal. So of course there is no overlapping. When no overlapping, you will get the signal is zero. Okay, it's same as just now. For t more than zero, okay, so the signal, okay, hash t minus tau, now it move from uh, t more than zero, okay. So, uh, I think this t should move to here. This is the t, okay. Okay, everyone, please change the t. Move the T to this. This is the location of T. All right. So you have the signal of hash T minus tau like this. And then you multiply with the U tau like this. So is there over, any overlapping? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, right. So the yes, overlapping sir. is this part. From 0 to t only. Okay? So after that, you do the integration. So for cas le less than 0, of course, just now, you there's no overlapping. Cas is 0, you obtain 0. From z negative infinity to t, you get 0. And then, for cas that more than 2, uh, sorry, more than 0, you have the overlapping from 0 to t, negative a, t minus tau, d tau. Okay, so you are talking about this one. So, okay, again, this part is wrong. Please change it. This part also wrong. Uh, I would say I just remove this one. There's no need for this one. Okay, so from G integration 0 to t, after integrate, you obtain, okay, uh, now we want to uh, integrate d tau, right? d tau, so t is actually is as a constant. We want to take out the t, so exponent power of a, we multiply Hello. in, we get exponent power of negative a t plus exponent power of a tau. So this exponent power of a t is as a constant. So we take out. Okay, we take out this one because we are nothing to do. We are talking about tau. This is t, so nothing. So this is as a constant. So we take it out and then we integrate. So we integrate uh, exponent a tau, we obtain exponent power of a tau divided by a from 0 to t. And then we substitute the t and 0, and we get the answer. So the final answer, for t less than 0, you get 0. For t more than 0, you get this value. Is it okay, class?
sorry class I didn't notice that I was kicked out uh, so which one I stopped just now where did I stop is it here uh, 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 yeah this one is it already explained mm. this what this part already explained yeah okay no, finish finish up to here finish is it up to here finish finish the class not yet okay never mind I, not yet. I start from x3 here so this is the for the case two that t more than or equal to zero we have the overlapping part which is from 0 to t so this is our overlapping part so the signal is exponent negative a in the bracket t minus tau okay okay this is the correction this is correction this one you just throw away and then here also the correction okay since we are the integration talk about d tau okay here we have t and tau so if T here actually is considered a constant. We want to talk about the tau only. Okay, so we want the tau only. So we take out the, we factor out the exponent negative at. Okay, we multiply in, you get exponent negative at plus exponent power of a tau. So the at, you take it out, so uh, you, and then you integrate the exponent power of a tau, d tau. Okay, because the integration is in terms of tau. So we integrate the exponent a tau only. So we integrate this one, we get exponent a tau divided by a from 0 to t. Okay, then we substitute the tau with the t and 0. So exponent 0, you get 1. So you simplify, you get the answer here. So the final answer is this one. That's it. Okay. Any question to ask us? Any question to ask? Tadi, Doctor. Tadi. Okay, if no, then I think I should stop here. Uh, for today and I will take the attendance okay class for uh, this week exercise I want you to do exercise 2.2 uh, A B C A B C uh, D uh, D okay A B C D so uh, there's a actually there's a typo this one should be xt okay xt sine t so this is uh, we miss out the t here okay a b c d you do the exercise a b c and d uh for this one okay you you try to do as a exercise 2.2 okay And then I will explain this question. Okay, you uh, the deadline is the uh, next week lah. Ne deadline is the next week, uh, Wednesday. So Thursday I will explain, explain how to do the A B C and A B C lah. Okay, so A B C D. I will explain this one as the tutorial class. Okay, so everyone please do it in the broad diagram form so that it's easy. Everyone make it in a tutorial, uh, the broad diagram form. Do you know what is broad diagram form? This one, you make it in this form. So that everyone get the same direction. Is it okay, class? Okay. Okay, doctor. So next thing, Huh? Mute. Apa dia? Tak dapat. Apa yang tak dapat? 
Itu semua kan kena ni. Kau nak? Apa yang tak dapat tu? Attendant. Tadi saya panggil tak ada? 